just preliminary results uh, of maybe future pro project uh, about the methods uh, of layout and reconstruction of regular uh, medieval location in uh, Central uh, Europe. And the aim of the project uh, is to verify uh, the methods which were already used uh, in this kind of analysis, but with uh, additional data which just come during the time, because this method which, we, which I will talk about, uh, they, they start to use in the 60s. Uh, and uh, then to apply another method, uh, which never been used before uh, in uh, analyze of uh, in urban scale, usually in, um, in very small scale, like architectural detail, uh, or just a small small object. Uh, so, uh, to explain the main idea of the project, uh, I will ask you to imagine that you are a, s a surveyor hired uh, to plan a new town in the middle of nowhere uh, using only a rope uh, and stick. It is possible that the effect of your work will be visible after hundreds of years. Uh, and some people using available methods and some new technologies will verify how accurate you have been. Uh, and this is exactly what uh, this uh, project is about, is uh, concentrate uh, in, uh, in Silesia region, which uh, now is showed uh, on, this, on this slide. And uh, these uh, two, um, two methods will be analyzed on uh, two case studies uh, from Namysłów uh, town and Dzierżoniów. Uh, so something about the regular towns uh, in Central Europe. Uh, in West uh, Europe, during about three centuries, uh, the pattern of regular town were developing. Gradually, we can observe the merge of uh, regular elements like a rectangular square, uh, some regular plots uh, with regular dimensions. But till this was um, very much optimized and simplified, uh, you can see uh, how uh, it's developed. Uh, for example, here in the first uh, phase of town planning, in the beginning of 13th century, we can see some regulation in the town planning, but they are still very extended and the frontage of, uh, of plots are very, uh, uh, very wide, not, uh, not so much shorter. Uh, and then you can see during the time, uh, still in the 13th century, that they are become uh, more, they are bec become more to the square dimensions, not, uh, not like before. And here uh, we can see like on, uh, in the second half of 14th century, uh, the town planning uh, became very regular, uh, like uh, in the town which we are now, in Krakow. Uh, you can see that uh, the plan became nine blocks layout uh, with, um, with central market uh, square. Uh, but um, the Central Europe, the pattern of regular town planning, uh, developed quite independently based of, uh, from the West Europe, uh, based on the local experience. Uh, and what is very good to say that in this 13th century, the pattern was developed and established in the newly arranged urban settlements of Central Europe. <coughs> uh, so, uh, how to reconstruct the layout of medieval uh, medieval town? Um, the thing is this: the most commonly used method, since I, since I already said in 16 uh, in 60s called modular analysis uh, or meteorological geometric analysis allows to reconstruct the parcellation basic on, uh, basic on the model, a unit of measure, confirmed in written sources. So firstly, we have to already assume what kind of unit uh, was used. Amongst uh, the lengths of basic objects on the town's plan, uh, a pattern of round multiplication like 50 uh, 100, 150 uh, of uh, unit like a, a foot uh, mm, length were searched to establish which measure system was used to a planning by medieval surveyors. Uh, having established a base measurement system, 
the whole plan is fit into a rope length grid, recalculating the length of the multiplication uh, of the rope lengths. The modular uh, analysis method was quite uh, widely criticized because of this rounding data, because of uh, the errors resulting from inaccurate measurements <coughs> uh, of some historical plans. Uh, and that's why we consider it to check it once again and maybe to apply another method to verify what kind of unit and sister measurements were used. <coughs> uh, of course, what kind of limitation we have? Basically, uh, we are talking now about the errors in accuracy of medieval layout. So the guys who are uh, just uh, measuring the city make some mistakes and uh, it is not from also from written sources that sometimes this mistake was even one unit so like they mistake one foot so it's maybe it can be hard to uh, find out um, statistically uh, how it was done uh, so and of course the tools which they used like a rope uh, it's not very fixed uh, fixed tool and uh, impact of the terrain and sometimes uh, this can use uh, some, uh, I will say, not regular uh, measurement, but to fit to the, to the terrain. Uh, and of course, there were later changes in the town layout. So we are now quite a lot of time from that, that period where uh, the town were established. So the thing is, uh, it would, if we still see uh, what was the first, um, first division uh, of, of the town. Uh, and of course, there are some inaccuracy in measurements. Uh, there were considered this uh, what kind of um, what kind of data we use uh, in, for these case studies for this just preliminary results. We used cadastral data. So in this case, they already in the borders of uh, of plots or or the borders of uh, each uh, parcel. <laughs> there is about. Uh, 10 centimeters, uh, that can be 10 centimeters error. Another uh, problem uh, with uh, reconstruction of uh, uh, units of length, uh, that is maybe we know something from our written sources about the system of measurements, but we know that there were few of them. Uh, so uh, like in, in, in Silesian towns, uh, in the historian of urbanism said that there were two foot standard, uh, Rhenish one, which is about 0 0.31 uh, meters, and uh, Helminska foot, 0 0.28 uh, meters. And then this whole system was multiplied and we get uh, two foot as a cubit, and then uh, a rod and rope. Uh, so if we can establish a basic unit, we can just assume what kind of system of measurements were used. And uh, it is um, uh, worthly to say uh, that uh, this uh, in laser Poland, so like for example uh, in Krakow, Krakow uh, the, um, the system were uh, by this modular method were already done. So most of the, uh, most of the towns were analyzed in this way uh, in 1670s. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so after, uh, if we're still talking about this modular analysis, after we already establish what, what probable uh, foot standard were used, uh, we have to, um, the second step is just to fit this modular grid um, to, the, to the town plan. Uh, and um, of course, there are some very important elements in the town which the grid should be fitted to and that's why we, we consider this as a main square frontage of plots uh, the gates which actually outline uh, the old town uh, so when we try to fit this grid like geometrically we have to uh, just focus on these elements uh, so maybe you don't see very well especially the one which are very far. <laughs> uh, but here are the three uh, proposals of, uh, of grid, uh, which are um, based of um, the first one, 
uh, it is based off the uh, food which is 0 0.29 uh, 296 exactly so it's like close to the Roman food because uh, it's also said that some in, in some towns they can use also the food which comes from the ancient ancient uh, time uh, and another food standard uh, was 0 0.28 is this uh, in the middle and the last one was this Flemish one 0 0.30 31. Uh, and when we just geometrically check it, uh, we orientate and locate this grid on very important elements of the town. So you can see that the frontage of the north uh, uh, elevation of the main square and the uh, uh, west um, elevation is like an orientation angle. And the rest, uh, we can just have to observe the elements of the city uh, which can fit to the grid or not. So there are even, in some cases, in some elements, there are very small uh, changes, but uh, in others, the difference shows that uh, one of this uh, grid fits more than another. Uh, the same thing we did in the, uh, in Dzerzhoniów. Uh, there are also the same uh, free, uh, free grid uh, models. And um, you can see here, this uh, colorful borders are the uh, borders of the um, fortification, so we should consider uh, the grid uh, just inside uh, these borders. And um, once again, we put all the grid together, and what we can see, what happened in this in the city, that probably uh, when it was measured first time, uh, they just measure a circle inside, uh, like like that one here, just to this point, but uh, um, regularly. But then it was some part of the city which still have houses and have plots. Uh, and when then they, after uh, they put a fortification, they include this part to the whole area. But before they wanted to have regular pattern around. <coughs> uh, Yes, so um, how to detect uh, medieval, uh, actually the value of parcel division. Uh, mm, uh, our case study is uh, one of the plots which probably has a medieval origin. So of course we can know that from the archaeological uh, sources and uh, from the architecture and layout of the city. And um, uh, the best of course is to choose the main square uh, because in the rest of the city, the, usually the war damage uh, cues the situation that the new buildings were built and you see nothing about the parcel division. Uh, what is also important that uh, width of the front elevations is not the same with the width of the parcel uh, division. Uh, so uh, I just skip it to show you that uh, here, for example, you can see the grid with the red color, uh, but uh, the parcel division uh, it's not exactly sharing the grid, just inside, the division was inside the parcel. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, mm, we said that we try to use another method to check if another approach, just to, we don't assume what kind of food unit were used, but we just wanted to check based on the set of measurements, uh, what was the unit. We use a cosine quantogram method, which were already used before. And here you have an um, algorithm which were applied uh, in uh, error by my colleagues. So if you want to, to find and check maybe your, some, some your data, you can find in this address or I can show you later because it's not very visible. Uh, and yes, so basically this is uh, what, uh, what actually equation a function is about. And uh, the Kusuna quantogram uh, method uh, in case of medieval uh, town planning is you have to think about it like each parcel dimension can be described as a integer m multiplied by a basic unit q and plus some error q's by the things which i told before um, and the uh, the value of q which maximizes the formula within a given range uh, is the one with the highest probability of being a true quantum uh, so Mm. So the first uh, case study, Namysów, 
uh, would we um, uh, first try to understand how the parcel uh, looks like and where were the uh, the medieval uh, division, how it doesn't look. Um, and I just have a shorter time, so I will not explain a lot. But we, of course, <laughs> use the historical data, uh, how the parcel was before in, um, uh, in the past, and then we reconstruct this. Uh, we used first um, the data, which uh, were already calculated by this modular method. And unfortunately, I, I don't know for exactly for who, but <laughs> by this method, uh, it shows that 0 0.25 uh, 25, uh, meters is actually a quantum for this data. But uh, the, the one who analyzed this by the modular method, which this is uh, this geometrical one, said that it's 0 0.31. So um, this, they, they just don't suitable to each other, but they are the same data. And then we try to just to check if this kind of data are suitable for that method. So we recalculate this. We recalculate foot to meters, uh, and then the result was good. So it just means that so um, so much rounding the data during a collecting and then changing to the foot standard uh, just makes huge error. So uh, when we analyze our data from uh, the master plan of uh, Namesuf, we get. Uh, good results, I mean the one which can be assumed that it was a Rhenish food standard, and we get half of the Rhenish food standard, 0 0.155. And then we get some um, verification of results by bootstrap confidence intervals, and in the simulation and the confidence interval 95%, the, the range is just in uh, within, so we can say that there is, there can be maybe not mistake, but we can't be sure because as you see, there are some additional uh, quantum candidates. And the same with it for, for Dzerzhonyuf. And there is the same. Have to stop. Yes, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. There will be no Dzerzhonyuf. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs>